there, welcome. Welcome to Home Keepers. Come right on in, my friend. So glad to be here, so glad you're there. And we can connect this way through television and bring you some of the greatest guests and talk about the things of the Lord and also talk about the things of life. You know, in uh, homekeeping, there's a lot of things that go into it. There's money, there's food, there's uh, medicine, there's raising children, and we try to cover every bit of that uh, with a great deal of joy, I would say. Uh, I've got a great program for you today because I don't know about you, but I love prophecy. And I remember when I was a little, little girl and we sang a lot of songs about heaven. And also I would go to bed at night and I wonder, I wonder if Jesus will come tonight. You know, I think the church has gotten away from that. And it's too bad because the things that are happening in the world today, I think it's right around the corner that Jesus is ready to come. You can tell by what's happening on, in our own great nation, uh, the United States of America. Well, my guest today was a pastor for many years, and now he travels teaching prophecy. His name is David Siriano, and he's from New York, and I'm delighted to have him, and I'm delighted to be able to introduce him to you. In just a few minutes, I'm, I'm going to join Stephanie first, and we're going to make a corn pudding. Uh, it's a pretty easy dish, but it's, it's one that uh, can kind of fill out your menu, if you know what I mean. Uh, before I join her, though, I, uh, we have been offering you this uh, book to help women maybe get an idea to make a little bit more money for the family. It's called Money Making Mom, so take a look. Money can't buy happiness, but properly managed, it can be an amazing tool to change lives and make a positive difference. That quote comes from Crystal Payne, wife, mother, and best-selling author of Money Making Mom. Crystal wants you to consider multiple money-making ideas, to dream big, and set long-term financial goals. This book comes highly recommended by financial expert Dave Ramsey, and we offer it to you for your gift of at least $17 to homekeepers. You may order today by calling 1-800-229-0059 or write to us at Box 6922, Clearwater, Florida, 33758. All right, we have been sending those books out and I hope you'll take advantage of it. Uh, our economy is so great right now and you might be surprised what you could discover when you get a little bit of knowledge like that and make a little bit of extra money for the family. She also has an amazing blog. Yes. Just look her up and, I mean, she teaches us about all of it. Mm -hmm. It's really educational. It's a great blog to follow. You could write a book, though. I could I, probably I just want to go over just a, a little bit of her history. She said, you know, a few years ago, and she, they were in debt a lot. Like, Americans, I tell my grandkids, you know, you don't have to just live from paycheck to paycheck. You don't have to do that. And uh, you and your husband wisely sat down and said, look, we make enough money to do this. Yeah, so and we had to figure out what the problem was, mm -hmm. eating out and just not paying attention, yeah. not knowing where our money was going. Because mm -hmm. you can't know where you're I going know. if you don't know where you <laughs> that are. That is exactly mm -hmm. right. And sometimes the first thing they tell you is quit buying lunch. Take it, we, take it with you. I, I don't eat lunch out, and we mm -hmm. only eat out dinner once every two weeks, and I bring it home. Mm -hmm. We don't even go out to eat. Mm -hmm. Just take some thought. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay, what so you call this corn pudding. What I call it? this cornbread casserole. Oh, okay. Only, I don't know. That sounds interesting. Yeah, because, cornbread casserole. and this is one of um, my, the re recipes my family asks me for most when we have some kind of. Really? Oh, yeah. This so is, this is the winner? This is the one they want. So I have a half a cup of butter in here that's softened. Is and this you wanna, like yours? Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. And you want to do it like this, okay? Follow the directions because you want the consistency that you're going to get from doing it and following the directions. I have a half a cup of sugar. So that was a half a cup of softened butter, half a cup of sugar. We want to get that creamed up. We're going to put in two eggs, one at a time. Okay. Why is it important when they put in just one at a time? Well, just for a good mixture. You just want a good, good mixing and good consistency. Because my daughter makes a pie, a chocolate mm -hmm. pie that you think you're in heaven. Mm -hmm. And she has to put the eggs in. She and follows beat the five directions. Five minutes for each egg. You got to follow the directions. Sometimes they're there for a reason. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and I have a cup of sour Possibly. cream that I'm going to mix in. What is this? That's milk. It's not, it's not like cream. It's just regular milk, yes. Yeah, so let me 
get this. Then we have a can of corn, sweet corn that's drained. I and love we have a, a can of cream corn. This is such a lovely consistency cornbread. I love great side dishes. Yeah, me too. There I you got go. It. Thank you. Oh, here, I'll take this. Thank you. All righty. Yes. Okay. And if you want to add a little kick, you just add a little can of green chilies to this. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Arthleen wouldn't like it, but I no. would. <laughs> um, that would add a little kick to it. Yeah. If you're, probably if you're, more people would like it. Yeah, but I don't like anything with heat. So, um, Jiffy, we yes. love we love Jiffy. Oh. We're going to do that part, person, whoever put this together, should be canonized. Part Jiffy, part milk. It has so many uses. So many uses. And you then, know, I wonder if, like, my great grandmother, even my grandmother, could come back. And see all oh. of them. Oh, modern cuts. All the shortcuts. Yes. From that up. until I mentioned before, but our beautiful Brooke here didn't know you baked a cake <laughs> except with a mix. <laughs> That's the younger girl. Yes. You can actually make a cake from Brooke. scratch. What? <laughs> There's such a thing as baking from Well, that's, scratch. I mean, how would you know if you weren't um, brought right, up that's with all it? You know. or, yeah. So, a can of sweet See, corn. See, my grandmother wouldn't know what a cake mix is, so. Yeah. A can of I doubt um, cream corn. I heaven, but. So. And then you just fold this in, and you put it in a sprayed mm -hmm. three-quart pan, and you bake it at 325 for 45 to 50 minutes. And it looks like this. And apparently, you don't cut it. You dish it out with a spoon. Well, the consi my consistency was really soft. That one's a little, a little seems like so. a little more dense. So you might be okay. But yeah, yeah see, that's good. Oh yes, yeah, I, I, this just kicks your cornbread yeah, up a notch. Good it's that so makes it jiggle. Yeah. good. So it's not like your regular cornbread. No, it's cornbread 2.0. <laughs> <laughs> oh. And it's Isn't that so wonderful. delicious? It's mm -hmm. so good. Yeah, I. Um, this is a winner. Yes. And we don't. We admit we don't always do winners. And it makes a lot for not a lot of money. Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm Which is my kind of dish. So, if you want this recipe, they're absolutely free, and that information is coming up on your screen right now. So you decide if you want it and the way you want to receive it, and we will get it out to you. Stay with me to meet David Siriano. You're going to love him. If you would like a copy of today's recipe, you may receive it by contacting us through social media as listed on the screen. When requesting a copy through the mail, be sure to include a self-addressed stamped envelope. Thank you, and please know we always appreciate hearing from our viewers. I'm delighted to introduce to you uh, David Siriano, who travels and teaches prophecy. Welcome to Home Keepers. Thank you. It's great to be here. Uh, you know, Brother Siriano, um, Dan Betzer, you, you might know him, right. he has a big church, and if he speaks on prophecy like on Wednesday night, it's packed out. My brother-in-law, David Crabtree, who is in heaven now, but if he would get into a prophecy series, Crowds would just pick up. So why don't we have more prophecy teaching? <laughs> <laughs> that's a, that's if you a want good, a big crowd. <laughs> that's a good question. And I know the Crabtree family uh -huh. have many years. Mm -hmm. uh, well, I, I, think, I think times have changed, uh, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. uh, I think we, we need to have a, a great emphasis or a greater emphasis on the second coming of the Lord, particularly when uh, we know of the signs that are being uh, brought out to us. But uh, it seems like we've lost that teaching somewhere along the mm -hmm. line. We didn't follow through enough. And our views, sometimes the views have changed. Uh, we we don't no longer have a view that Israel plays an important role with the second coming. There's others who don't believe that. So uh, it's it's uh, been been difficult to keep that. And plus, the younger generation, they really know nothing about the second coming because they haven't been taught. And what they call the millennials and others, mm -hmm. uh, that uh, they they don't know anything or enough. And our churches have kind of like turned away from it. And I think it's just a, a trick of the enemy, a trick of the devil, and, uh, and I think we need to emphasize it more. Mm -hmm. Because when you really believe this, it's going to change the way you live. It's going to change a lot about For you. For sure. Um, our nation is in a situation right now that 
tell me that this the coming of the Lord's around the corner. Mm -hmm. There's so much coarseness and, and division and hatred yes. besides <coughs> states that will kill a brand new baby after it's I born. Know. I know, that's bad. Uh, yeah. We've got same-sex marriage. There's all these things spitting in the face of God, yeah. and he's not going to take it forever. Yeah, no, no, he won't. And, and it's, it's, it's really our nation is really, I wrote, I wrote a book called The Cultural Collapse of America, and I think our culture is collapsing, our, our culture yes. is changing. Uh, and uh, we, we, we are now moving uh, so much to the left that we would end up wanting to kill babies who are born mm -hmm. alive, homosexual marriages. Uh, and uh, it's typical of a nation that is a, a superpower, like the United States of America. Other superpowers have collapsed. And I think that's what we're, we're in the throes of collapse as well. And, and we are changing from the conservative uh, right of the Bible, the Word of God, and all of a sudden now, uh, as many nations do, there's much diversity that comes in, and that diversity brings unwanted diversity un un and unwanted change. And that's, I think, where we are now. Well, sometimes when you go through the religious magazines and you see conventions or whatever, so much of the topic seems to be, well, how you can be a better you. Right. Uh, <laughs> How, how, to grow, how to grow your church or how to <laughs> staff your church or whatever, yeah. Yes, and uh, I think you're right that we've, we've got some generation never, maybe they don't even know about Jesus coming back. Now, how significant was it when President Trump moved the embassy from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem? What does that tell us? Uh, very significant, uh, and also um, it's, uh, announcing that Jerusalem is the capital of, of Israel. Mm -hmm. Uh, and it's significant because when you go back far enough, uh, you know, we fought World War I and World War II so that the Jews could return to Israel. Uh, you won't get that in a history book, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, World War I under Woodrow Wilson, World War II under Franklin uh, Delano Roosevelt. Uh, and then all of a sudden right after that came the Korean conflict, and the Korean conflict uh, uh, was a, a conflict involving the armies of the East. Uh, and we know that armies of the east and armies from the north are going to invade Israel in the end time. So all of that is significant, particularly when right after World War II, Israel was established as a nation. And now mm -hmm. all of a sudden, uh, uh, President Trump says, uh, we're moving our embassy there, uh, much to the anger of a, a bunch of people. Oh, yes. And also Jerusalem's the capital. He recognized that. And that brings significant importance, I think, to that whole situation. I think I read somewhere that uh, other presidents were, were going to do it but they didn't, said it would cost a billion dollars or something. He think he moved it for less than half a million from what I read, sure. just, just yeah. moved it. Okay, yeah, here's yeah. a building and this is it and yeah. this is our embassy and we put our name on it. Yeah, that he just put his uh, money no. where, you know, where, where his mouth is, he just, he <laughs> said it. Uh, and, uh, it's not rocket science. Uh, yeah, I, I, that's true. <laughs> uh, and other presidents have talked about it. And nothing yeah. bad to say about these other presidents, mm -hmm. but, but uh, President Obama talked about it, President Clinton, President Pre Bush. Bush yeah. uh, they've all said that. We're going we're gonna to move the embassy, and they believed in it, but they didn't have the guts, if I can mm -hmm. use that word, uh, <laughs> as, as uh, a Trump mm -hmm. did and, and what, mm -hmm. he, what he ha had he had in his heart. A and he moved it, and he also declared it as the capital, which is, to me, uh, a, a sign of the importance of there will come a time in which there will be a treaty that will be made, uh, I think probably between the Arabs and the Jews, to build a temple, to have some of the Arabs continue in their land, and uh, I think it'll come with the Antichrist uh, in the future. And I think every step is clo getting closer to the time of the, mm -hmm. the second coming of Christ, uh, the, the uh, tribulation, and the Antichrist. I'm going to de date myself, but I heard a lot of preachers growing up who gave me a name for the Antichrist, you know, Hitler, Mussolini. Oh, sure. uh, yeah. uh, but nobody knows his name, right. perhaps, except the Lord. Um, but do you think he's going to come out of that old Roman Empire? Uh, what do we know specifically about him? Well, well uh, Daniel 8 and Daniel 11 uh, both speak about where he's going to be coming from. And it involved the armies of the north and the south, which was Egypt and uh, uh, Egypt in the south and, and Syria, which is modern day Assyria and that area there now uh, from the north. Uh, and so we know he's coming from somewhere in that part of the country. And the Roman Empire was expanded further than that. So he may be coming from Eastern Europe. So we don't quite know where he's coming from, but it'll be in that territory of that part of the world. But he's going to be very likable. He's very going much to, so. Yep, he's going to have a lot of charisma. You'll have a lot of answers. Mm -hmm. Now, um, when you uh, think of what's happening in the world today, like our nation is, I don't know if it's even like 2% population growth. Europe is almost zero. 
and so I read where in 30 years, Europe will be an, a, an Islam nation. I, yes. Because they grow big families, okay? So you just give a generation and all. So what is the significance? Uh, we, we have Islam believers in Congress now. Exactly, sure. Uh, what's the significance of that? Well, the, they uh, they are trying to take over other nations. That's that's their mantra. That's what they believe in doing. Uh, they believe in uh, infiltrating, which is what that's what they've done to other nations, and that's why they've grown as much as they have. Uh, and they're trying to do the same thing with the United States. Mm -hmm. And Europe is in a dangerous position mm -hmm. right now, uh, very much so. And we're on that on that way as well. Uh, and I think the significance is that eventually Islam is going to come to Christ. I, be I believe that. Uh, because um, in, in Isaiah chapter 19, Isaiah called uh, Egypt uh, uh, my people, and he called Assyria the work of my hands, and he called Israel my inheritance. And it's like those three nations are going to be able to get along somehow. Egypt will have to come to its knees and finally build an altar to the Lord, is what it says in Isaiah. Uh, and so the significance, in my opinion anyway, is the fact that eventually those, those uh, Islam will come to Christ. But in the meantime, they're doing as much, uh, I think, harm uh, by pointing people to Muhammad. Uh, or, or, and they believe in Jesus, but he's like lower down on their prophetic list. Uh, but uh, I think they're pointing uh, every, every, everyone to Muhammad and to the Islam faith, which I, th is, I don't think is the same as their God is not the same as our God. I don't think that. I don't think so. No. <laughs> uh, exactly. I would not do well behind a burqa. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they don't treat women very well. <laughs> Let me tr that's what I've read and, and I've got, we've got plenty of examples sure. and don't take my car keys away from me or yeah. you're going to yeah. have a problem. It's, it's a horrible Yes, and, 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 the, and the thing of it is, if, if, you're, if they're against the Jews, like Adolf Hitler, he was really killing the Jews. Mm -hmm. uh, and we cannot be anti-Semitic, uh, which one of our members of Congress is, uh, at least one of them anyway. Mm -hmm. uh, There's and, another and one I would probably put in that category too. <laughs> sure. And, and, and you can't speak against the Jews or want to kill them because even the words of Jesus were, there will come a time, and this is in John chapter 16, uh, there's going to, uh, or yeah, it's 16, I think it is. Uh, there's going to come a time in which uh, there will be people who will want to kill you, and they're thinking that they're doing God a favor. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and, and Jesus went on to say that if they do that, they don't know the Father, nor do they know me. And so if they claim to want to kill the Jews like an Adolf Hitler, or if Islam wants to kill the Jews, then uh, they can say that it's the same God as much as they want to, but they're not serving our mm -hmm. Father, and they're not serving the Messiah, Jesus Christ. Well, recently uh, around uh, uh, Facebook, and I always try to look to see where it came from. It, it um, came from an authentic source, where um, the Catholic Pope had kind of joined with Islam. He, he did. Like, like did it say you're serving the same God? Is that what it said? Yeah, well, that, that's, that's what the, uh, well, what's, what's happening is, is, is that um, there's going to be globalization of politics and globalization of religion. Uh, and uh, the one thing that's different about Trump and why he's so hated and so vilified around the world is because he's a nationalist. He said so himself, mm -hmm. and others have called him a nationalist. And I think that probably, uh, uh, just as George Bush's presidency, jo George Bush 43, he was probably the last global policeman president, because mm -hmm. Obama was not interested in that. Mm -hmm. And Donald Trump is now pulling back even further and saying, I'm a nationalist. So he's trying to make America great again, which is a good thing. But in terms of how our involvement will be in the world, it's not a good thing, because uh, they want to make everything global, both religion and and uh, the politics, and that's what has happened with the Pope and with his Imam, uh, where they said that we're going to get along, we're going to have the same faith, we're, we're going to uh, try to uh, bring everyone together, and that's where the world is heading. And, uh, and America, I think, is not quite there yet because of Donald Trump. Yes, because when you use the word nationalist, they tried to make it like a really bad thing. But isn't that like standing up for your family? Uh, well is that I, what Trump is doing? He's going to put my family first. Uh, exactly, and that, that's what you have to do. And, and I know there's a lot of people who say, well, we don't need protection around our borders, and we, you know, we've oh, gone through please. all that. Uh, but we do, and we, you, like you said, we have to take care of our family. A and uh, I'm, I'm, I'm a son of immigrants that came over. Mm -hmm. My father came from Italy, and my mother's parents came from Italy. So I'm, Siriano, I'm, I'm, I never <laughs> would have guessed. <laughs> <laughs> if you just joined us, I am simply delighted to have this gentleman. The information's on the screen. Uh, some of you pastors, church leaders, uh, take a look at that website because um, maybe you haven't had anybody in your pulpit to talk about prophecy for a long time, and it is so important. 
so he travels everywhere and so i'm sure you could put him on your list but i highly and you can tell you can tell that he he makes it interesting sometimes when they speak about prophecy you go to sleep you have to kind of make it really interesting well what i try to do is i try to you have to look at history and then you have to have somewhat of an understanding of political science, which is involving the nations, Trump and mm -hmm. Obama or mm -hmm. whoever. Mm -hmm. So you have to look at history, which is the, is the Word of God. You have to understand political science. And then you have to have a, a love, which I do, for eschatology, mm -hmm. which is a doctrine of future things. So if you, look at, if you look at what God has done in the past, you can pretty much figure out what he's going to do in the future. Mm -hmm. Well, it's, you know, it's just uh, beyond fascinating. I... I think the hypocrisy just has reached all time heights. These people who don't want our borders protected, they've got their homes protected. And I saw yeah, right. uh, the mayor of New York City had his fence built even higher than, than it was. And so uh, people need to recognize the abject hypocrisy. And right now, as you and I are talking, they the uh, Democrats can't get together enough to censure this lady who has has made anti-Semitic remarks. And that, that ought to tell us something. That ought to tell us what's happening in the nation. Yeah, the, the, the nation is, uh, we're, we're polarized for one thing. Uh, and I predicted that in another one of my books that uh, we were going to come to the point where we were polarized. And it's, one, it's okay to have two-party systems, which we've had for years. Sure. Years and years and years. It's all right to have two-party system where I disagree with you here, and, and, and they, would, they would sit down and, and they would meet in the back room and they would have their cups of coffees and so forth and say, mm -hmm. uh, hey, let's, let's try to uh, you compromise. You do this and I'll do this. Yeah, right, yeah. compromise. But we're not, we're not there anymore. No. It's really no. polarized where we are torn apart. And I think that's a, a, an ominous sign. Uh, and it's a bad sign, too, to talk about impeachment because uh, in the first 100 and, uh, 185 years of our country, we only had one impeachment, uh, and that was Andrew Johnson. Uh, and uh, from, from uh, George Washington up to the time of Nixon, there was only the one, and that was Johnson after Abraham Lincoln. Since, that, since Nixon, we've had Nixon, who resigned, we have uh, Clinton, had Clinton who was impeached, uh -huh. and now we have Trump who they're talking about impeachment. That's three mm -hmm. in the last 40, about 45 years. Three in the last 45 years mm -hmm. as opposed to one in the first 185 yeah, years. Yeah, and the one with Clinton didn't work. Uh, you know, they, right. they, ought, they ought to have a, have a good case at least. Um, I, was, uh, I was thinking about just the... Uh, just the godlessness, because I grew up in a nation where we had a, a moral foundation that it kind of everybody agreed on. Uh, the schools and the uh, Washington, D.C., we had a moral code, and it was agreed upon. It was based in the Bible. There, there's, no, there's no doubt about that. Yeah. And uh, we would say the Lord's Prayer and things in school like that. Uh, and so there, there was an agreement there. It's not anymore. No. And... and I, Maybe it's good that the lines are drawn because if somebody can go in a voting booth and vote for anybody that okay is killing a baby right after it came out of its mother's womb, you better check and see, you know, what God you're yeah. serving. And, it, and it's been over 40 years now uh, since Roe versus Wade. Mm -hmm. And usually the number 40 is associated in the Bible with tribulation, distress, and persecution, or, or trouble, or, or division, uh, and, or, or actually judgment from God. Mm -hmm. And so we are at that, we are past the point of 40 years. A and uh, I think we're heading in the wrong direction. We're heading for judgment from mm -hmm. God. Uh, and that's why our nation is collapsing. And that's why the, the culture is gone. The culture is collapsing. And we can't remember anymore what you said. Mm -hmm. Prayer, prayer. Over, I mm -hmm. remember going to prayers and, and, and the emphasis on the flag and, and uh, emphasis on God and country, yeah. it's just not that way I anymore. Yeah, there were some differences, but on the, on the basics, right. uh, we did agree. Do you believe, uh, <laughs> this is a good question, uh, do you believe the Antichrist is in the world today? Do you think uh, he's here? Uh, he's very much alive. In, in fact, uh, really? the, 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 the devil, uh, I think he can be. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the, the devil always has to have someone that it's the Antichrist. We, our parents saw, thought it was Adolf Hitler. Uh, and the reason is because you and I don't know, know the day or the hour that the Lord is coming. Mm -hmm. Neither does anyone listening in your audience, and neither does the devil. Mm -hmm. The devil does not know the day or the hour. So he always has to have an antichrist in waiting, an antichrist ready. Uh -huh. uh, so he had one ready with Adolf Hitler, but that didn't work. That wasn't the time. Was wasn't right. He doesn't know the day or the hour. Mm -hmm. uh, so he, uh, in my opinion, he has somebody ready today. 
I don't know who that is, and you don't know who that is. No one knows who that is. But there's an Antichrist that's waiting in the wings somewhere. And if this is the time, then that Antichrist will be brought to the forefront, uh, and, and he will lead the way into the time of the tribulation. But uh, the devil doesn't know, but only one person knows, and that's mm -hmm. the Father in heaven. And, you know, those who know the Lord and, and have any understanding of Scripture and, and a little bit of prophecy, there are things right before our eyes right now that are telling us that, that he's coming. And that's, that's right. I used to, I was a minister of music for many years, and um, one of my favorite things with the big orchestra and all was to lead that um, redemption draweth nigh. That when all these things happen, lift up your heads, your redemption draweth nigh. That's, that's what the Christians should be thinking when they see all this collapsing and we're doing sure. the best we can, but they ought to be looking up. Yeah, the, the, the fig tree is mentioned in, yes. in the Gospels as been standing, for, we believe that's standing for Israel. But also Luke's Gospel, in that same uh, chapter, the, the Synoptic Gospels, uh, uh, which is um, uh, Matthew uh, 24, um, Mark 13, Luke 21. And in Luke 21, it says that we, not only when you see the fig tree, but when you see all the trees, so in other words, it's more than just a nation of Israel, but when you see what's happening in the nations, plural, when you saw what happened with uh, Russia that collapsed, uh, mm -hmm. when, when you saw, when we, we were, well, it was before we were born, but uh, uh, the, the British Empire collapsed in the 1920s, and then it began to unravel even more. Uh, and, uh, and with Russia's collapse, as I said, the USSR, and now we're in the throes of collapse. When you see these mm -hmm. national changes being made, you know that something is in the air, something. and there's trouble that's brewing ahead. Mm -hmm. And, oh, we got just a minute or so, but talk about how evangelism needs to be put on steroids. There are so many people who need to know about Jesus, who need to accept him. We look at these vast uh, nations, you know, of people who are following a false god and all, and we really need to pray that those workers will be into the harvest. Sure, the, we, the harvest is great. It's, it's white unto harvest, and we need to do everything we can to support uh, our churches, our mm -hmm. pastors, our leaders, our missionaries, mm -hmm. our evangelists, we need to do much even more for that mm -hmm. because of the end times. Well, we are out of time, but I, I, I'm thankful for you and that you're out there and you are educating a lot of Christians. I imagine some of the things you're telling them they never heard of in all the years they've been serving the Lord. Sure. So may your tribe increase. And listen, anytime you're back in this area, will you come and see us? I would be happy okay. to. Thank you. Okay. Uh, and for you, dear people, I know you've really uh, enjoyed uh, this very quick discussion, but there are a lot of things going on that you can look through the eyes of the scripture and know that something's about to happen. But we are out of time, so join me next time remembering there's no higher calling than that of a homekeeper. God bless you. If you should miss a homekeeper's program, you can catch up by going to www.ctnonline.com. Click on CTM Programs and then on Homekeepers.